Hey there, it's Dave with Flipper Force, and this is a quick case study on how to create a schedule for your rehab projects. So in this case study, I'm just going to go through a typical rehab project. Maybe it's going to be a three bedroom, two bath property, 1500 square feet, and we're going to be replacing the roof, doing some exterior painting, replacing the windows, and then on the interior, um, we're going to be tearing out all of the bathrooms, the kitchens, the flooring, and then just basically building back new, new kitchen, new bathrooms, new flooring throughout the property, and then doing some painting and then replacing the light fixtures. So that's the, the basic scope of work of the property. Uh, let's get started. Um, the first thing that I would do is I'm going to organize our schedule into two different project types. So you can, you can organize your project in something called project type. So you can see we've got a task type here for project. And I'm going to organize it by exterior work and interior work. Okay, so we've got, oops, I didn't didn't make that a project, so let's change that to project. So now we've got two uh, project task types here, and what you can do is you can organize your work underneath these task types. So let me just add in our first task, which is going to be roofing. So generally, Roofing is going to be the first thing that you want to do on a project just to make sure that you get the property dried in. So if you do have a roof that is leaking on the property, you'll want to get that fixed up front so that way you, you're not leaking all over your, your new drywall, your new painting, your new flooring throughout the property. So generally roofing is going to be able to be completed in about one to two days. So if it's a if it's a 1500 square foot property, I would imagine your, your roofing crew could get that knocked out in one day. Otherwise, it might take up to two days if it's a little bit larger of a roof or maybe you're dealing with a wood shingle roof or one of the fancy clay tile roofs, it might take a little bit longer than that. But an asphalt shingle roof, you should be able to get that done in one to two days. So we've added in roofing here. Now let's add in our next task, which is gonna be the windows and doors. So let's add in windows and doors here. looks like I added that below roofing on accident so let's just drag that back up okay and windows and doors are gonna have to happen after the roofing is installed so let's drag this over to the right and generally windows and doors might take about three to five days to install so maybe you've got 10 windows on the property um, then you've got an exterior door on the front door and then you've got a patio door that could end up taking you probably about three to five days. Let's just plug in three days here for all the windows. Okay, so now we've got roofing and we've got windows and doors installed into our schedule. What we need to do is we need to connect these two items here. Basically, this is going to tell the scheduler that in order for the windows and doors to start, the roofing has to be completed on the project. So windows and doors can't start until we get the roof completed on the project here and then after windows and doors are installed then we can we can paint the property so let's add in exterior painting here okay and exterior painting is probably going to take between two to three days it really kind of depends on how much prep work needs to happen to the siding how much caulking and stuff like that and taping and masking um, so let's just plug in three days for painting here and painting's not going to happen until after windows and doors. And it can't start until we get the windows and doors completed. So we'll want to drag a connector here from the end of windows and doors to exterior painting. So now in order for exterior painting to start, windows and doors have to be completed. And then after exterior painting is done, um, we will do our landscaping. So let's plug in landscaping here. And generally landscaping is just going to take about a day unless you've got some really elaborate landscaping that you're wanting to do um, it's generally going to take about a day so after exterior painting happens we will do our landscaping so one thing on the exterior painting is um, you, you may want to wait on exterior painting until the the interior painting needs to happen so maybe your crew doesn't want to come out and paint just the exterior they may wait until um, they're actually doing the interior painting and they'll come out and do both the exterior painting and the interior painting there in one week or something like that. So that might be the only thing there that changes on the schedule. So this might end up shifting way down the schedule to whenever the interior painting gets done. But other than that, this is a rough 
uh, timeline of what we could expect for the exterior work to happen on this property. So let's move into the interior here. Um, the first thing that you'll want to take care of is the demolition. So let's plug in demolition. And demolition is probably going to be something that can be taken care of in generally two to three days. So that's going to be to tear out the kitchen, tear out the bathrooms, tear out all of the existing carpet, maybe uh, tearing out all the interior doors if you're going to be replacing those. So again, that's probably going to take about two to three days. If there's a bunch of junk in the house, you may want to add a couple days to your timeline or duration for demolition. But let's just plug in three days for demolition here. And I need to actually drag this underneath interior work because it's not currently underneath it. So now we've got it underneath interior work, our interior work project. So after demolition happens, generally it's gonna be rough framing. So if you're tearing into walls and you're maybe reframing some walls or reconfiguring a bathroom or or tearing out a wall in between your kitchen and your living room. You'll have a little bit of rough framing here, or maybe you're finishing a basement, but there's really not gonna be a whole lot of work unless you're doing some really elaborate reconfiguration of your property. So let's just plug in one day for rough framing. And then the next thing we'll need to think about is rough electrical and plumbing work. So if you're rewiring the house or running new circuits throughout the house, that would be what a rough electrical would be. Um, so in this property, let's assume that we're re rewiring the entire house. So that's going to probably take about three to five days. So let's just drag that out. And that's going to need to happen after we get done with the demolition and the rough framing. So let's actually fix this as well. So rough framing can't happen until after we get done with demolition. Rough electrical can't happen until we get done with the framing. Okay. And then let's add in our rough plumbing here. So you might be able to do this um, simultaneously while you're doing the electrical, right? So let's say that rough plumbing's maybe gonna only take four days. So this is gonna be to repipe um, some PEX plumbing throughout the house and then maybe set a new bathtub in each of the bathrooms and get that stuff kind of ready. So that's what that would be for. And that can't happen until after rough framing is done, okay? So now we've got rough electrical and rough plumbing going on at the exact same time. So that's assuming that we're both gonna, we're gonna have both the electricians and the plumbers in the property working together in the same property. Um, so generally, that you could probably make that work, but if it's gonna be get crowded, you may want to, you know, make this so that they're not working in the same property at the same time but for this case study let's assume that they're going to be in there at the exact same time working on the the plumbing and the electrical okay so once rough electrical gets done we may need to have an inspection so depending on what your local jurisdiction or building department says you may have to have an inspection so let's add in an inspection And let's make this a milestone. Okay, so milestones are used to track important things on your schedule. And the milestone actually has zero duration, so it doesn't have a duration to it of a day or anything like that. It's just zero duration, so it's just used to identify important things that are happening on your project. So that can't happen until we get the rough electrical and the plumbing done. So once the inspector comes out and he inspects the property and gives us approval of the rough electrical work and plumbing work that we've done on the property, we can actually start to install drywall. So we might have some walls that are open and we may need to install some drywall in the bathroom or maybe there's some miscellaneous patching throughout the property. So let's add in that here. And that might take two to three days, um, depending on what the scope of work is. So if they're doing a whole bunch of patching throughout the property or installing new drywall, it could take up to five days. If they're you know, skim coating the entire ceiling or removing popcorn ceilings, it, it could probably take up to five days to do all that. So I'm just gonna plug in three days here for drywall and miscellaneous patching here. So let's drag this out 
and this can't happen until after the rough inspection has been improved. So now we've got drywall and miscellaneous patching added. Now we're going to do doors and trim. So we've got raw drywall on the walls. Um, there might be some door openings that don't have any trim on them. We may have had to remove some of the base throughout the property. So we're going to need to install new door trim, um, new baseboard throughout the property. So let's say interior doors and trim. Okay, and this is probably going to take three to five days to do this. Okay, so if you're installing new doors throughout the property, you're removing all the existing doors, installing all new doors throughout the property, and then installing baseboard in most of the rooms, maybe you can salvage some of it. I would assume that that's probably going to be a three to five day project, and honestly, let's change it to five just to be safe here. And we need to drag that underneath our interior work. Okay. And let's drag this out to the right hand side so after drywall and miscellaneous patching we can do our interior doors and trim okay and let's let's zoom this out so that way we can see uh, what we're doing here a little bit better let's do zoom to fit so now you can see everything a little bit better uh, as far as everything we've got going on here and let's add in our next item which is going to be interior painting So once we get all the door trim installed, once we get all the baseboard uh, trim installed throughout the property, we're going to do our interior painting. And let's drag this out. Let's zoom in now a little bit. Okay. And interior painting is probably going to be another thing that's going to take in between two to five days. So it really kind of depends on how much prep, how much masking and taping they have to do on the property. But if you're installing a whole bunch of new trim throughout the property or new drywall and everything like that, and everything needs to be painted, it, it's going to end up taking probably three to five days. So let's plug in four days for painting. And then after that, we can also um, probably start working on our bathroom finishes and our kitchen finishes. So one thing with kitchens and bathrooms, sometimes the materials just take a little bit of while to be purchased and delivered to the property. So if you're doing a custom kitchen, it's going to take the cabinetry material supplier a while to manufacture the cabinets and get those delivered to the property. So let's let's do let's make one for kitchen cabinetry. Let's just do cabinetry actually. So we'll install our kitchen cabinets and vanities here. And it's all the way over here, so let's just move this over to the side. Okay. And if we're installing all of our kitchen cabinets and our vanities, let's just make that an entire week. So five days work, worth of work for the kitchen cabinetry and vanities that we're going to be installing on the property. And then we'll also be doing our bathroom finishes. So right around this time when we're installing our kitchen cabinets we may also start to install the bathroom finishes. So let's So that would be like the tile and stuff like that. Um, you could have a tile guy working in the bathroom while you have your cabinetry guys installing the kitchen cabinets. Um, so that's that's how you could do that. Again if you've only got you know one crew it's really gonna be one after the other but if you've got multiple crews or multiple subcontractors working on your property you can really kind of start to do some of this simultaneously to help you get things done. But let's just assume that we've got one crew doing everything back to back. Um, so basically they'll get the kitchen cabinetry and vanities installed and then after that they'll do the bathroom finishes. So let's say, let's just say tiling, bathroom finishes, okay. And again we need to drag this over to the right hand side to get it out there. It doesn't look like we have these two items in our interior work again, so let's just drag this. Okay. All right. So now we've got that all set up, and next, let's assume that that tiling is going to take probably five days. So tiling, 
and that's going to be two bathrooms and honestly it might take even longer than that it might take seven days because if you're you're tiling two bathrooms here three days each if they've got to tile the showers they've got to tile the bathroom floors for two bathrooms I think six to seven days might be a little bit more reasonable for that so let's plug in tiling for bathroom finishes okay and then after that let's assume that we're gonna get the countertops installed so once we get the kitchen cabinetry over here installed in the property we'll have our countertop guy come out and measure the countertop area to get that all measured out so that way they can cut it down to size and manufacture it so let's assume that once we get the tiling done we give them about a week or two to get the countertops manufactured okay so now we've got kitchen counters and that can usually be done in just a day so let's just drag this out to the right so once we get the kitchen countertops installed uh, we can also get the appliances delivered so let's just plug in appliances here um, we can also start installing all of our light fixtures and stuff like that so that's something we haven't added to our schedule yet but you can really start to do that uh, kind of any time probably after interior painting so you just don't want to get a whole bunch of paint on all of your new light fixtures so you probably do that right here so we could probably add that in up here above so we're gonna need some lighting up here so let's add that in and we'll move it up there above okay interior lighting And that's probably just going to take a day for the electrician so let's just you know plug this in here so now we've got interior lighting we got an electrician coming in after the painting gets done we're also going to have the cabinetry guy in there right around the same time they're going to be installing the kitchen cabinetry and then once we get that that done we'll have our tiling getting done in the bathroom and stuff like that and then we'll get have our countertops installed in our kitchen then our appliances and the last couple items that we need to add in are going to be our flooring so so you really kind of want to wait until the very end to install your your carpet or refinish your hardwood floors because you don't want contractors tracking dirt all over your brand new carpet or scratching your brand new hardwood floors so we've got some hardwood floors refinishing so we'll say hardwood floor refinishing and that's probably going to take two days and then we've also got some carpet that we're going to be adding in the bedrooms as well. Okay. So let's add in carpeting. And that's going to take a day usually. So usually carpet guys are pretty quick. They can get in and out of a house in a couple in about a half a day or a day it seems like. So let's add in carpeting here. So once we get the carpet installed, we're really getting to the end of the project and we've got all of our finishes installed in the property. We've got our kitchen looking nice. We have our bathrooms looking good. We've got our new appliances installed and then we've got the flooring installed throughout the property. So what we need to do is we probably need to go through and do some punch lists just to make sure everything's looking good. So I'll add in a punch list here and punch list just really means if you're just going through the property, you're you're inspecting everything making sure everything looks right operates properly and so that way when you list the property for your open house everything looks good for the home buyers that are going to be walking through your property so that's going to probably take you know two to three days just cleaning up miscellaneous items throughout the property so let's drag this over to the end get that punch list stuff done and then really the final thing you need to do is final cleaning so you'll have somebody come in maybe a cleaning crew come in for a hundred dollars two hundred dollars come in and clean the property for half a day they're gonna they're going to vacuum the carpets they're gonna clean the countertops clean out the bathrooms clean up anything that your contractors left in the property just to get it spick and span and ready to be listed on the market 
So our final thing that we need to do here is the open house, or you could say listing day. So open house or listing day, whatever you want to do. So maybe you're just throwing it on the market, or maybe you're hosting an open house to officially launch it on the market, whatever you want to do. But I would consider this to be a project milestone. So we've got our open house listing day as a project milestone all the way out here. So you can see, we'll drag this here. And that is our final item on our schedule. So you can see that took us about 20 minutes to build that schedule. Um, here soon, you'll be able to load in schedule templates that we'll provide for you. So we'll provide this pre-built for you so that way you don't have to redo this every time. Uh, but hopefully that provided a quick overview of how to create a schedule. Now let's see how long it, it, it has for a duration. So you can see the exterior is going to take about eight days. We're doing that concurrently and simultaneously as we are with our interior work. But let's say that we ha have one crew doing all of the work on the project. Now, in, in that case, we can't really do the exterior work and the interior work at the same time. So what we would do is we'll switch on auto scheduling here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift back demolition to start after. See how everything's shifting back? So when we turn on auto scheduling, it's gonna automatically shift everything back based upon the predecessor connections that we have here. So you can see I'm shifting back demolition to start after we get the landscaping done. So now everything behind demolition automatically shifted back when we shifted back demolition, reframing shifted back, which automatically shifted back all of our rough plumbing and electrical work, and then all of our finish work that we have going on later on on the project. So overall, in this scenario, our duration is probably going to be, you know, eight plus 41 days. So we've got eight days of exterior work. We've got 41 days of interior work here. So total about 49 days on this project. And another thing that you can do is you can do critical path here, which is going to identify the critical items on your schedule, which are going to influence the completion date on your project. So since we're doing everything basically back to back, this entire, every single thing on the schedule is gonna be critical because if, if roofing gets delayed by one day, it's going to delay the completion date by one day. So that's what that critical path means. It means if roofing takes one day longer than anticipated, so let's change this duration to two here. You can see everything else automatically shifted back on the schedule. So now our completion date is now 50 days back instead of 49 because everything relies on roofing being started on that day. And if roofing doesn't start on that day, then it's automatically going to postpone or delay our schedule. So that's a quick overview of how you can create a rehab project schedule. And again, hopefully that was a, a good educational resource for you just to kind of learn about how to create a schedule, learn about different durations for different activities that you typically see on a average rehab project. But again, we are going to be launching new template functionality, which will allow you to automatically load this data directly into the scheduler without you needing to create a schedule. So again, it looks like it took us about 20 minutes to create that schedule. So hopefully that new templating functionality will save you 20 minutes on every single project that you have in the future. So hopefully you find that valuable. I guess if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.